Thank you very much, Volodymyr. Um, thank you very much for having me here. And let me at the very beginning um, express my condolences for uh, the families, the children, the innocent people that have been attacked today by Russia at the train station. Um, it is appalling, it is horrible, it's a nice nightmare, and I really want to say that our thoughts are with those families and with those poor people. Indeed, I started my day today with a visit to Bucha because being in Bucha and seeing what has happened, you can tell that our humanity was shattered in Bucha. And it is right and just that the world has voted to suspend Russia from the Human Rights Council. This war has a, is a challenge for the entire international community, and this is indeed a very decisive moment by now. It is a moment where we have to decide and where we have to fight for the question to be answered, will heinous devastation be winning, or will it be humanity that is prevailing? Will autocracy be dominant, or will democracy be the long-term dominant winner? Or will the right of might be the rule, or will it be the rule of law? And this is what is at stake in this war. It is a war, yes, that Russia unleashed against an innocent Ukraine, but it's much, much more than that on top. It is these big questions that will be decided in this war. So your fight is also our fight. And I'm here in Kiev with you today to send a very strong message that the European Union is by your side. We stand by your side. This is the message that, dear Volodymyr, I want to bring to you, but also to the Ukrainian people. We have discussed a lot of uh, practical topics, how we can step up uh, the European support for Ukraine. And let me be clear, we can never match the sacrifice of the Ukrainian people. Never can we match that. But we are mobilizing our economic power to make Putin pay a very, very heavy price. We have, as you said, imposed five waves of unprecedented sanctions against Russia, and we are already preparing the next wave. We are now moving into a system of rolling sanctions. And these sanctions are biting hard. If you look at the exports in goods, to Russia, they have fallen almost by 71 percent. Inflation is now by 20 percent. It is rising in Russia. Business confidence in Russia is at the lowest level since 1995, and the best and brightest minds are leaving Russia, together with more than 700 private companies, rightly so, who are re leaving Russia. On top of this, Member states have already frozen 225 billion euros of private Russian assets in the European Union since the beginning of the war. So if you look at that, Russia will descend in economic, financial, and technological delay, decay, while Ukraine is marching towards a European future. This is what I see. We stand with you as you defend your country. And this is my second point. Indeed, Ukrainian people are holding up the torch of freedom for all of us. The European Union is sending weapons to your country. We have allocated almost 1 billion euros from the European Peace Facility to support the Ukrainian armed forces, and more will come. Later on, the High Representative will present that. With this support to the brave Ukrainian soldiers fighting for Ukraine's freedom, we want to underline that you are fighting for all of us. The third topic that we have been discussing was indeed strengthening our financial uh, support for Ukraine. Today, we are delivering around about 1 billion euros of support. This sum consists of three different pillars. It is, as we speak, uh, the transfer of 120 million euros to budget support. We will, on top, make available 330 million euros from the emergency package now. And we have discussed that the third pillar is accelerating the second half of the macrofinancial assistance 
worth 600 million euros. The fourth, fourth topic that we have been discussing was the Ukrainians' Uh, refugees as they seek refuge within our borders, and I promise you, Volodymyr, we will take good care of them until they can safely return home. And home, that means home to a free and independent and prosperous Ukraine. We will make sure that they have access to housing, schools, medical care, and work, because the brave people of Ukraine deserve nothing less. Therefore, together with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada, we are convening tomorrow a pledging event in Warsaw. We call the campaign Stand Up for Ukraine. We will mobilize support for people fleeing the war inside Ukraine, so the internally displaced people, as well as those outside Ukraine. And this campaign is yet another proof that Ukraine's cause today is the world's cause. Of course, this is only for short term right now, the support. Therefore, we have also been discussing a long term reconstruction fund. And I very much liked your idea of twinning regions, cities, businesses to support the reconstruction of Ukraine. Last but not least, we are with you as you dream of Europe. My message today is very clear. Ukraine belongs to the European family. We've heard your request loud and clear. And today we're here to give you a first positive answer. In this envelope, dear Volodymyr, there is an important step towards EU membership. The questionnaire that is in here is the basis for our discussion in the coming weeks. It is where your path towards Europe and the European Union begins. Let me promise you for this questionnaire that I will hand over to you in a moment. A questionnaire, of course, has to be answered. These are questions that then form the opinion of the European Union as a recommendation to the Council. We stand ready 24 hours, seven days a week, to support you in filling out this questionnaire. We know a lot about each other because we've been working together so intensively over the last years. So it will be not as usual a matter of years to form this opinion, but I think a matter of weeks if we work closely together. So for you, dear Volodymyr, Thank you so much. I want to give you that. So this is the question. Yeah.